Okay, welcome everyone. There's still some people trickling in, um, but we'll get the session started. Um, so we want to thank you for joining our webinar today on how to be a good mentor. We have um, two expert panelists with us, which we'll be introduced in a second, as well as our event chair, Farouk, um, who I'll be handing over in a sec to in a second. Um, before we start, I just want to go through some housekeeping slides um, so the webinar can run smoothly. Um, we are recording the session. So by participating, you are indicating your consent for the recording. We're recording the session so that you can look back at it uh, at a later time and that so that people who weren't able to attend today can still watch the session later on. Closed captions are available. You just have to click on the CC button below in the menu you can see on Zoom, and you will have um, a live transcription available. If you have any technical issues, you can either message me in the chat or email the email address provided here. Um, so I, this is my email address. I will, I will help you with your technical queries. To reduce background noise, please can you mute yourself um at all times unless you're speaking just so we can all hear the speaker quite clearly and you can unmute yourself later in the q a session if you have a question if you have a question during the q a just raise your hand on zoom um, in the participant panel um, and you can also submit your questions and comments at any point during the talks uh, in the chat and they will be picked up during the q a session so that is all from my side. Thank you. And I'm handing over to Farouk. Thank you, Tabitha. Uh, welcome, everyone. And assalamu alaikum. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on the time zone from where you are seeing this webinar. Uh, can you please confirm that you can clearly hear my voice and see my video? Just simply a yes would be good enough. OK. So I welcome you to this webinar on mentoring. Uh, mentoring is a fantastic thing. It has the potential to change lives. And as Sir Isaac Newton's once said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. We all need these kind of giants in our personal and professional life that can positively impact our life and make it easier and worthwhile in achieving our goals. I welcome you all to this webinar. And today we have two fantastic speakers from two different countries of the world so that you can give get different perspective. One of them is Dr. Sahibzada Nasir Mansoor, and second is uh, Dr. Dorothy Mohebe. You are going to listen to Dr. Nasir Mansoor first, followed by a talk by Dr. Dorothy, and then we are going to have a and a session. So before I hand over the uh, stage to Dr. Nasir Mansoor, I would like to formally introduce him. Uh, one uh, main thing that I would like to, <clears throat> sorry. So Dr. Nasir Mansoor is known to me since 1997. So, so far it has been, a journey of 25 years. And we have not only been like friends, brothers, but also as mentors and mentees. Right now he's working as a consultant and assistant professor in rehabilitation medicine at the combined military hospital, Okara Kent, Pakistan. He is a well-known medical educationist all around Pakistan. And he's on the panel of College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan, where he regularly conducts 
sessions on medical education for consultants, faculty, and residents. He is into medical writing, and he has authored more than 50 papers which have been published in high-impact medical journals. In addition, he has been an invited speaker in many conferences around the globe. So I welcome Dr. Nasir Mansoor and ask him to present his first talk on this topic. Nasir, over to you. Nasir, uh, kindly unmute yourself, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Farooq, for the uh, generous introduction. So uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. So today I'm going to talk about uh, mentorship, what it takes and what not to do. I would like to thank INASP and Author8 for inviting me to this session to be a speaker. Uh, I've got no disclosures to make except for uh, my mentor that you have already uh, told everybody. So the chair of the session is my mentor and not less than two and a half decades old mentor. So it's a two way relationship. We have, we have learned a lot from each other. Whenever uh, mentorship comes to my mind, this, this favorite cartoon of uh, Kung Fu Panda one of my kids' favorite and mine too, this comes to me every time, in which this uh, Master Shifu, this little one, he mentors and trains a fat, dull, dumb panda and transforms him into a dragon warrior just by utilizing his weaknesses and looking for his strengths and then transforming him into a dragon warrior. If we look at the knowledge doubling curve over the centuries. So for the first 15 centuries, the knowledge doubled only once. And then there has been a rapid revolution in knowledge and currently the knowledge is doubling almost every year. So with this amount of knowledge coming in, the universities, they are no longer have the monopoly over the knowledge. The internet has revolutionized everything. So now what we need is the real value of wisdom and the ability to mentor and uh, inspire people. And it is the, the mentors that can help us sift through all these uh, available knowledge, get to the right sources and improve our skills in, other, in order to improve our uh, knowledge as well as progress in our careers. The story of mentor, it comes from Odessi, Homer's Odessi, in which Odysseus, he while leaving for Trojan Wars, he left his friend called Mentor to serve as a teacher and overlook his son Telemachus. So this is the origin of Mentor, where it's coming from. And then we see this uh, mentorship relationship in different areas and different specialities in the world. But what inspires me the most is that Socrates, he mentored Plato. Plato mentored Aristotle and Aristotle mentored Alexander the Great, who almost conquered all of the world. So what a great uh, mentorship and mentee relationship that, 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 that changed the world as well. So uh, uh, Alexander said that I am indebted to my father for living, but to my teachers for living well. So mentor is no less than it's more than a teacher. So if we come to the formal definition of uh, mentorship, it's a voluntary relationship typically between two individuals in which the mentor is usually an experienced, highly regarded, empathic individual, often working in the same organization or the field as the mentee. The mentor, by listening and talking with the mentee in private and in confidence, guides the mentee in development of his or her own ideas, learning, and personal and professional development. So this is the definition by Standing Committee on Postgraduate Medical and Dental Education. It's a very comprehensive, uh, definition and it covers almost all aspects of mentorship. But there are certain confusions. At times, people confuse mentorship with advisor. Like advice giving is one of the traits of the mentor, but simple advisor doesn't 
make one a mentor because he gives an advice in a neutral way, right? Then again, role modeling is sometimes confused with mentorship. It's one of the traits of mentorship, but a role model is for everybody. And there is no personal relationship between role modeling. A mentor has got a personal relation with a mentee. And then collaborator, like it's between two, usually it's between peers for some shared goal or some shared objectives or some skill learning or anything for a common goal. Again, a mentor can be a collaborator, but a collaborator alone is not a mentor. The different roles that a mentor plays, we all know that he's a teacher, a sponsor, he gives feedback, he's a coach, he's a confidante, he provides information, professional socialization and networking, helps in career development and a very critical support. There are different types of mentorship relation, relationships and different types. I'll be focusing on the most common one and the most practical ones, but there is the, the, the traditional didactic direct, direct, uh, mentoring in which obviously one senior person is the mentor and the junior is usually the mentee. And this is the most uh, traditional form of mentoring. Then a person can have a primary mentor and then secondary, multiple secondary mentors for different uh, areas or skills. Then a single mentor can group, uh, 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 can, can men, mentee, the group of mentees, can mentor a group of mentees. Then there are formal mentorship programs in different universities, programs, institutes. They are usually accountable, but they are liable to problems as well if uh, they are not uh, well worked or they are not well followed. Then there is informal mentorship, and this is one of the most commonest form of mentorship worldwide in, in which there are no formal boundaries or no formal accountability, but it works very well on a personal basis. Then friends or peer mentorships among the friends, it, it helps reduce uh, the load on the experienced mentors. So peers can also be mentors. And uh, in today's world of internet and post COVID, e-mentoring is also very common and it's mostly used in research uh, areas. So of, among all these different types of mentorship, I'll be focusing on this one-to-one -one mentorship, like this face-to-face -face mentorship. That's the most human form, the most genuine form, and that works very well if utilized well. Right. So what is the, there is no single formula or there is no single uh, recipe for a perfect mentor. So what I would suggest that either you do or you do not, there is no try. If you want to become a mentor, you need to have the requ requisite skills. You should know the, all these things or you don't do. There's some, there's no half-hearted mentorship because this, it won't help a, a lot. Then there are certain misconceptions that it's considered that uh, uh, it's not an uh, informal relationship, mentorship. It's not an ad hoc thing, or it's not an a for granted thing. So people take, at times they take it for granted and uh, as an informal thing. It requires more time, more energy, and more efforts. But believe me, it's always going to be worth it. 90% of the people who have been mentored when they were young becomes mentors themselves. So if you have been mentored ever in your life, there are likely chances that you will be mentoring people. And this is how we pass the baton to the new generation and by passing the knowledge and skills that we have gathered over decades and pass it on to the next generation. Newton said that if I have seen further, I have, uh, it's all because of, uh, because I have been standing upon the shoulders of the giants. So in terms of mentorship, if you are a good mentor, I would suggest that you make sure that you are standing on the shoulder of the giants. You have got the, the required knowledge and skills. You should be having enough knowledge and skills so that you can pass it on to the next generation. And also make sure that you are giant, you are a giant yourself. You know all those things. 
so that your mentees can stand on your shoulder and learn from your experience. But believe me, don't be a bad giant or don't be an ugly giant so, so that people are fed up of or if people are afraid of and it becomes a, a terrorizing for a, for a mentees and people around, right? So another quality for good mentorship is that you should have a lot of examples. You should have good examples and you should have bad examples. And if you are fortunate enough, you should have really good bad examples because at times you might not be knowing what to do, but you should definitely know, exactly know what should not be done, that you need to transfer it to your uh, mentees. Confucius said, to know what you know and what you don't know, that's true knowledge. So you should know your limitations, that what I know and what I don't know, that, that will give you an edge. Another skill for mentorship, uh, that's it's, that it, you need to be honest. Honesty is the best policy. You need to be honest with your profession. You need to be honest with yourself. And you need to be honest with your mentees. You need to show passion. You need to show your enthusiasm. Because if you are yourself not enthusiastic about a subject, how are you going to mentor people in that particular area? It said that the mediocre mentor tells, the good mentor explains, the superior mentor demonstrates, and the greatest mentors inspire. So although the mentor, they do tell, they do explain, they do demonstrate, but if you can inspire and motivate your mentees, you have done already done a great job in modifying your mentor-mentee relationship. The passion of the students brings out the wisdom of the mentor. Once you motivate and inspire your uh, mentees, they, they will bring out the best in you as well. Another characteristic, if you, if you have a choice to select your mentees in an informal setting, so if it's a perfect match for being a, man, for being a mentee, keeping in your, your strengths and weaknesses, your mentee's strengths and weaknesses, learning objectives and everything. So if there is a good match between a mentor and mentee, it's going to be an excellent relationship. Make sure that the expectations with the mentee are very clear in advance about the learning objectives, the, 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 the frequency of meetings, the expectations. So you, you clear the expectation in the very beginning, the relationship is going to go very well and effective. Then always, always, always have a plan for your mentee. Plan should be based on mentee's goals and what he wants to learn. And the plan should be mutually agreeable. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Then be ready to spend a lot of time, a lot of time with your mentee. Sp spend time observing them for the required skills or the required knowledge that they need. Invite them to your life. Observe them doing that skill. Let them observe you for doing the same things that they want to learn. And this is how uh, it's going to be effective. You should have certain soft skills. Empathy is at number one. You should put yourself in the, in the mentee's shoes because they have got different experience, different social levels, different uh, objectives. So always keep in mind what the mentee is going through and then tailor your uh, relationship accordingly. You should have effective communication skills. You should be kind. Your body language should be good. You should be bold and clear. And the most important is you should be an active listener. You should give importance, respect to your mentee, ask questions, paraphrase his questions, clarify his uh, whatever queries are there, and be a very active listener. It's a good, it's a, it's a trait a good mentor should have. Then you should have these emotional intelligence skills. You should know your own strengths and weaknesses. You should know the social about the social environment you are in and you should have empathy and mental uh, motivation, and you should be able to self-regulate in those particular environments, a very important trait for mentors. Then reflection, a good mentor will keep on improving by reflecting, by reflecting from his past experiences and from his current experiences. So whatever uh, relationship you are in, mentor and mentee relationship, always go back and reflect 
that what I did good, what I did bad, what I can improve further and inculcate the same thing in your mentees as well. John Devi said that we don't learn from the experiences. We learn from reflecting on those experiences. So please pass on this skill to your mentees as well as implement on your own self. Then feedback is very important. You should know how to give effective feedback. You should know how to bring correction and instruction and should be very kindly, not harshly. You can give feedback in a sandwich technique, give them what they, tell them what they did well and reinforce that. Tell them what needs correction. Come out with some ideas how to improve that and have a mutually agreeable plan among both of you. Encouragement. It, if if you, you are going to encourage your mentees, believe me, a mentee who is encouraged will do much more than what he is expected of. So encourage behaviors that are learned and utilized. Natural talents, obviously, everybody has, but always encourage something that is learned and utilized as well. So other qualities might be you should be available whenever you are needed by your mentees, approachable and available. You should be supportive. You should maintain confidentiality and keep professional boundaries. And most important that you should be unselfish. You should be happy to see your mentors, mentees being successful or even going ahead of you. And then there are certain challenges as well in this mentor-mentee relationship. Burnout is number one. You have to take care that you yourself don't get burnout, as well as keep an eye on your mentee that they don't get out, uh, burn, they get burnout due to their professional and other commitments. There are, the common challenges include that we don't have a common goal between the mentor and the mentee, so they are lost. Then there are at times unreasonable demands, emotional and academic from the mentee side that you need to clarify in the very beginning. At times, the mentors are disinterested or unhelpful due to either hierarchy, generational gaps or tensions, or personality clashes. And at times, mentors are manipulative. They use their mentees to propagate their own career interest, propagate their own research, propagate their own uh, personal stuff. So don't do that. And at times they forget boundaries and other ethical issues that leads to problems. So in the end, I would just like to say that mentorship is a commitment. It can be learned, groomed, and polished. Focus on the process of mentorship rather than outcome. Be honest, achieve the required skills, be enthusiastic, and motivate the mentees. Foster soft skills and be ready to pass the baton to, of mentorship to the next generation. So I thank you all. If there are any questions, I would like to take them as per the chair's recommendation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nasir, for an excellent presentation. You gave us an overview of the process of mentorship, what it entails, what makes a good mentor, what are the challenges. And I would say these are the things, you know, that one or many of us have faced in their life as early career researchers. Many of us are facing right now. And I'm really hopeful that this presentation brings clarity to most of us, whether they are at a mentee stage or at a mentorship stage. So again, thank you very much. As far as the questions are concerned, I'm pretty sure it has raised many questions and queries for the participants, but I would request them to please write down their question and queries in the chat box, because we're going to have a formal Q&A session at the end of the second talk. So now I would like to uh, invite my second uh, speaker of the session. And the second speaker is uh, Dr. Dorothy Mohibi. She serves as a deputy director of operation and provide strategic leadership necessary to achieve a world's mission of building a more gender responsive agriculture innovation system. She has more than 40 years experience of working with African Agriculture Network, and she in the past has worked as the coordinator of the Regional Agricultural Information uh, Network of the Association for Strengthening Agricultural Research in Eastern and Central Africa. She started her career as a planning officer with the Kenyan Ministry of Agriculture, and then she served for 10 years as a program manager with the ACP European Union Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Cooperation. She is an expert in mentoring, and she formally provides strategic advice to various initiatives focused on capacity building and working with vulnerable growth. She also works with many regional and international networks where she takes part in conceptualizing and designing different mentorship programs. 
She is also a board member of several community-based organizations working with the elderly and other vulnerable group. I welcome Dr. Dorothy Mohibi to the second talk of the session. Dorothy, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, facilitator, and I hope you can hear me and see my screen. Yes, we can hear you and see your screen. You can go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And uh, I also want to acknowledge the previous uh, speaker. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, as I listen, because we are not in the same location, there's a lot of uh, same experiences and I'm going to share my uh, mentoring experience with AWARD, where I work. And uh, AWARD is African Women in Agricultural Research and Development. And you'll see our contacts at the end of the presentation. And just to highlight from my experience, what makes a good mentor. And the actual quotes on uh, how mentoring began is actually uh, some of our favorite uh, quotes. But I just also want to say something about some of the factors that influence the success. And for me, one of my favorite quotes is what mentoring is, is just a brain to pick and a near to listen. And I think the previous speaker also said it, the listening and just pushing your mentee in the right direction. So uh, something to do with an award mentoring, because uh, we work with the, the agricultural research and development, our mentoring allows the senior scientists normally to share their experience and knowledge and networks, mainly with the mentee, and in our case has been uh, uh, fellows that we've been supporting, to provide the nurturing support so that the mentee can grow both within their professional work, but also to encourage them to build their own careers and uh, leadership skills so that they become socially responsible and they grow in that area. So just to highlight what uh, the award mentoring is all about, normally we have uh, an award uh, mentor is matched with a mentee, what we call a mentee. So it's a one year relationship. And we normally, our mentoring is informal. So we train them. And when we talked about like the skills, like soft skills that the previous speaker talked about, we actually take them through these uh, skills, self-awareness through an orientation. And the purpose is for the mentee to pursue both their career and personal skills. So it's a science and the leadership and the networks. And during the second year, the mentee actually takes on, as the speaker says, passes on the baton to a junior scientist and on and on. And that's how it's well represented in that uh, pictorial. In the center, we have a mentor and uh, you mentor, the lady in the blue and the lady in blue takes on as a mentor and mentors the lady in the light top. So it's always passing on. A good mentor should not stay with the mentee forever, but build the skills of a mentee. And then that mentee should be in a position to have the skills now to pass it on. So that is important. And what we say is that each mentoring relationship is tailored to meet the career or personal goals of the mentee. So uh, the speaker said he's had a very good relationship with his mentee, who is our facilitator. It doesn't mean that he will be a good mentor to another maybe mentee, like maybe me. It's always, there has to be some chemistry. So every relationship has to be special that the mentee and the mentor have some chemistry. And who makes a, a good mentor? That's what uh, we are asking ourselves. There has to be some knowledge and expertise in the area that the mentee uh, wants to be mentored. There has to be commitment. So you have to be willing to mentor and share knowledge, allocate time and uh, be motivated. It's just kind of a reputation from the previous one, but I just wanted to highlight what we have experienced. Reputation and recognition is important because you have a lot of people who want to mentor, but they have a very bad reputation in universities or the research institutes. Ability to communicate. And that is means you have to listen 
and you also have to be good at asking the right questions. Affirming your mentee is important, but also giving constructive feedback. I think we understand what we mean by constructive feedback. And uh, I have here so many personal qualities that makes a good mentor. You don't have to be everything here, but as the previous uh, speaker says, you have to be several of what I have listed. But some that I would like to highlight is open mind, empathetic, non-judgmental. And another one that is very important that we find is confid confidentiality. You really have to be very confidential in that relationship. And I mean, you can just uh, glance through that, that list and you don't have to be everything, but really these are the qualities that we are looking for, for you to be a good mentor, because you can be a good professional, but not necessarily a good mentor. You can be a high achiever, but a high achiever is not necessarily a good mentor. One of my favorite quotes comes from one of our favorite uh, mentors. And it says, a champion who does not raise other champions is not worth celebrating as accomplished scientists. Our work will be evaluated by the member of scientists we raise and we value and we add to their life to help them achieve great heights. What do I like about this quote? This gentleman, Professor Emmanuel, has been one of our most frequent mentors. He has mentored several times and yet he's such a busy person. He's a professor of food science in Ghana. He's now the vice chancellor of a university. He's a traditional chief, but he can still have time to mentor. So it is the passion, it is the time. It's not so much how much or how senior you are. Uh, it is really that passion and he represents what we call a good mentor. And you can Google him and uh, see what he has accomplished. Uh, uh, some, some of uh, the motivations that makes good, uh, results in good mentors Mentors themselves, and this is the feedback that we get from the mentors from the program, is they also get that fulfillment, the passion, they have a passion, they, have, they feel fulfilled, but they didn't know how to mentor. So when they go through this formal training of mentors, they feel fulfilled. Then at the end of it, they find that they've developed good skills for mentoring so that they can mentor other people. And it helps them in their career growth, in their professional reputation, and generally they pick up skills in leadership and coaching. And we said, it's just not a matter of telling. In fact, I liked what he said, it's not a matter of telling and explaining, it is inspiring. That's what the previous said, uh, speaker said. And then enhancing their own personal growth, uh, confidence as mentors, self-awareness, expanding networks. And it's uh, something that is prestigious and uh, brings in good publicity through the networks. And these are some of the quotes that come from our own mentors on what motivates them and what makes them be good mentors. They want to share experience and knowledge. They want to enhance their mentoring skills. They want to increase their networks. They want to be role models to younger scientists and so on and so on. So there are some of the factors that we find that influence the process. And I think it kind of comes uh, as a repetition, but commitment, shared interest. We found that basic training in mentoring helps and having resources. Resources can be very minimal. Even uh, online resources, like just having this Zoom platform is a resource. Uh, it used to be geographical proximity, but over the past few years, it's no longer distance, but also access to technology because people are increasingly can mentor online but occasionally a face-to-face -face helps. Uh, personality types, and that's why we train them. There are some personality types that just don't have the chemistry. So one mentor is good to one mentee, but not necessarily to the second mentee because of the personality differences. Sometimes the social cultural background, the gender, the age, it just depends on your preferences. Some mentees prefer the same uh, uh, age, group or the same gender of a mentee, others don't care. So you just have to be aware of that. 
and some of the ingredients for success. And uh, I think it was also highlighted is clear objectives of the mentoring. So some people want to be mentored because they want to grow in their career. Some want to improve their uh, science. Some institutions set up a mentoring program to retain staff. Sometimes it's for personal growth. So you have to set your goals. You have to be very clear on that. And another ingredient is to just get out of your comfort zone. You know, you're, you're, you're beyond your immediate area of work. You have to think beyond that. You can mention somebody outside your professional or your technical area of expertise, innovativeness and having a mindset. All these are good ingredients for uh, mentoring. So I'll stop there and uh, just leave that uh, for one minute just for you to get that uh, contact that we have because uh, uh, there's a little bit of, um, I would say reputation, but similar experiences coming from uh, two different continents. And I'm glad that uh, our experiences are so, uh, so aligned yeah, uh, 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 in, in running a mentoring program. So thank you very much and uh, looking forward to the interactions. The thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Dorothy, for an excellent talk. Uh, it was, an, you know, like you presented some other different perspective that I loved very much. Especially, I like your quote, you know, you don't have to be everything, but there are certain things that everyone can strive to be. And, you know, certain things were uh, emphasized by both speakers. And I personally feel they do matter a lot in the real world out there whether as a person or as a professional. And these include being non-judgmental, maintaining the confidentiality. Imagine someone is actually asking you for mentorship. He or she is opening up to you. They are going to actually sometime reveal their darkest secrets, their personal secrets, their professional secrets, and they believe in you. It's very, very important that you maintain the confidentiality. And even if you are not in any more in a mentee-mentor relationship, it is your duty, obligation, that you do not discuss these things with anyone else without their prior permission. And compassion. So, you know, sometimes people say, you know, there's this is my professional persona, but we need to understand our personal lives reflect in our professional lives. Our professional lives reflect in our personal life. If you are a compassionate person at heart, if you try to help each other, believe you me, you are going to be a good professional as well as, as a good person. Another good thing that you mentioned and which was very practical is that a high achiever is not necessarily a good mentor. We also need to understand this thing. Many a time we see that people in their personal professional life are really good achievers. They might have the greatest grades, they might land up with the biggest job, and they might have many gold medals at the end of the academic cycle. But unfortunately, they fail to produce more leaders. Unfortunately, they fail to mentor others. So we need to understand that in order to become a mentor, you don't need some kind of good grades and you don't need that kind of like uh, some uh, uh, a big job or title. You need compassion. You need that kind of approach that I'm here to help someone and I'm going to make a positive reference in someone's life. And you also talked about the factor which may influence success of a mentor-mentor relationship. Again, like commitment and shared interest. And probably it's very important to have clear goals for everyone right at the start. And this holds true both for a professional relationship and it also holds true for a personal relationship. That what kind of goals you two are having? Do you agree on the same thing? Because if you don't agree, you might not walk a little long distance. So with this, we formally come to an end of our presentations. And now we are going to start with our Q&A session. We are well on time. And I thank my both of our speakers again for keeping and respecting the time limits. So now I'm going to start with the questions. Uh, I have actually noted down two or three, and then I'm going to go back to the chat box. So the first question that I'm going to uh, ha hand over to Nasser to answer is, how do one handle a mentee that is a very slow learner? Nasser, your comments on this, please. OK, so slow learner. So first, you need to identify that why, why he is a slow learner. You need to look into what is his particular learning style, what, what are his deficiencies, why is he slow at learning. So uh, look at his learning style. You look for the causes, whether they are some academic causes, some social problems, or some personal issues that are him hampering his learning. 
or is it uh, a lack of uh, resources certain resources that he is lacking so you need to guide him or her to the right resources and if you identify the the, the root cause that what's what's causing him uh, hampering his learning then you need to have remedies accordingly you need to give him some extra time guide him to some extra resources guide him to the right people and maybe help him with his uh, learning style as well like some people are auditory some people are visual learners some people are kinesthetic learners so you can guide them to the different things or guide them to different resources for learning uh thank you very much so we are going to move to the next question and i'm going to ask dorothy to answer this question i'm going to read out the question Okay, uh, I mean, probably the question has been already answered in the presentation, but it would be good if we can recap it. So the question is, why people mentor and what are the advantages of mentoring? So Dorothy, if you can like uh, answer the question, why do people mentor and what are the advantages? Yeah, thank you for that question. Why do people mentor is... Uh, they have a lot of experience. A lot of us have a lot of experience, I believe. All of us on this platform, we have a lot of experience. And it would be a pity for us to go away or leave or retire or whatever happens to us with all that knowledge, the lessons that we've learned, good and bad, without sharing them with other people who are coming up. And if I relate that to the previous question, when somebody is struggling, there are people who struggle, I mean, genuinely, because either they're slow learners or they have another challenge. You have an opportunity to work with such a person, whether it is in your work life or wherever it is, to mentor them, to, to be able to bring them up. You may have somebody who is uh, not experienced in the technical in the, in, the, in the institution, like if you're working in a lab or whatever it is, you mentor that person so that uh, they learn. Because there's a difference between a mentor and a supervisor because the supervisor is focused on results. They don't care how you get to those results. There's no feeling, I mean, they have some feeling, but that's not their main focus. Their focus is results oriented. Whereas a mentor, it is now trying to find out why this person is maybe, maybe a more coaching uh, attitude, why they're not performing, for instance. How do you help them? Maybe they have personal problems, social problems. Maybe the supervisor is a problem. So how to go around that? So there's so many uh, reasons why I think people mentor. And uh, I think in River, uh, on the other side, those are the advantages you have to tap, you are tapping on the experience and the brains of somebody who is more experienced. That's how I'll put it as the advantages. Yeah, why struggle when you can tap onto, you have to have a man, I mean, a learning mindset. So you are just tapping into this big knowledge. Thank you very much. So going to the, uh, okay, probably you can answer the next question as well. Probably uh, uh, answer it to a little bit extent. Uh, are counselors mentors? So would you consider counselors as mentors, Dorothy? <laughs> yes or no, I know. No, because uh, a mentor, you have a role to play in sharing your experience in um, more uh, technical, general life. Whereas a counselor, I, I, I believe they're talking about a therapist which is a very specialized uh, area that uh, you need to be trained in, you know, uh, a trained person. And we do get actually in our mentoring relationship as an institution, cases which need special psychological problems or other mental problems. And we refer them to the expert because you do not want to start uh, being both when you are not professionally trained to be a counselor or a therapist, because I think that requires a special training. I would say no. Okay, thank you. So uh, our uh, speaker think that you know, like counselors are not mentors. Okay. The next question I'm going to pose to Nasser is, Nasser, uh, is mentorship for those who are not interested or committed? Again, uh, like, would you ask like to answer this question? Yeah. Uh, 
is there something that one can do? I mean, yes, if they're not even interested and someone like, uh, like uh, puts this duty on them that you have to mentor me because it's social. Do you think they're going to work like this? Uh, well, I think mentorship is a two-way re relationship. Like you cannot just walk to somebody and tell them that would you be my friend or would you be my Valentine or would you be my like any relationship. So mentorship is just like that. You cannot just walk to somebody and tell them that would you be my mentor. No, you need to have some time together. You need to have uh, uh, understand each other. You need to have some shared goals. You need to have that chemistry at least the minimum level that you want, you need to have those required skills that you think that you can help that person and you develop a relationship, then you are able to mentor. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Sir. Thank you, I agree. The next question I'm going to ask is actually uh, from both of you. So first I'm going to request Dorothy to answer this question and then maybe Nasser can give his perspective as well. Uh, a good question I must say. How can I assure myself that I am now ready to mentor? So what is that stage in learning where you say or you claim that, okay, now I'm a mentor and I can mentee others? Dorothy, you first, please. I wish I could see the person who asked the question because it's very interesting. I think we are all ready at any one time to mentor because there's at any one time you are in a position where you have more knowledge than somebody else. I think it's a willingness at that point where you are ready to share your knowledge, share your experience, and start learning about how to mentor. So anybody on this platform, I'll just encourage you to learn more about mentoring. And uh, if you are ready and willing and uh, uh, can allocate some time, there's always somebody somewhere that can do with the uh, mentoring. So there's no particular place where you just say, huh, today I'm ready to, uh, uh, to mentor. It's really about yourself, yeah. Thank you. So Nasir, your take on this. Is there a point in your professional life where you can say, okay, so this is where I wear my mentor hat and become a mentor? Well, I think uh, I agree with uh, Dorothy. There is no uh, golden unicorn moment when you, you can say that now I'm, uh, I'm a mentor. Like everybody needs somebody. So if you've got something to share, if you have got some knowledge or skill, and if you, have, you think that uh, you, you, can, you can bring some change in somebody's life by life or his professional career or his education or his learning, if you can bring about change, if you think that you can do that and you have got that required knowledge that you can share with, I think you can do it anytime. That's why we see peer mentors. We see reverse mentoring as well. So uh, there's no specific time, but I would say if somebody is willing to mentor somebody, then he should at least uh, learn it a bit formally. You just go uh, attend some workshop on it, attend some, see some videos on it, do some literature search, that, that certain qualities that we mention in a mentor. So if you want to do it, do it in a, in, a, in a better way. Like you can mentor at any time, but if you do it in a better way, that will result in like, like the, the course will be good and the outcome will be good. Thank you, Nasir. So you think, you know, like uh, everyone can mentor uh, another person, but again, you know, maybe going online and exploring the online resources that have sprung up in the last one decade would be a good idea to get a, a overview what mentoring entails. Thank you very much. The next question is, are there any courses or training for becoming a mentor? Or do I just learn it based on my own experiences? Dorothy, please. I thought you just <laughs> answered that. Okay, there are online, uh, of course, now the opportunities that there are online courses, but also different sectors. I know universities, several universities have uh, mentoring programs and they post them on their websites and some of them are public goods. Uh, people who are thematic areas like in agriculture and rural development, I know like uh, in us here, they might have to say something about it. They organize mentoring programs. So different uh, areas that you can look for. It depends on uh, where you, you are. You can uh, look at the institution, you can look on the web, you can look at some of the universities. You can share with us, like for me, you can share with me where you work so that I can also like share with you maybe where you can go for some of these uh, uh, 
uh, resources that are available. So different resources are, are available. Thank you. And on a personal note, you know, many good universities around the globe, as Nasir mentioned, they do have a formal uh, uh, this mentoring program and they will actually formally connect you with a mentor or a mentee. They are going to monitor that program. And if someone of my uh, speakers is in, in that position and of authority, you might want to explore this uh, model and project. Because again, as Nasser said, you know, like good people, great people, great universities and institutions, they create more great people. And one of the ways to create more great people and institute is actually to start these kind of formal mentee mentor relationships. Because you know you can have it informally. There's nothing wrong with that. But once you have a formal relationship that is being monitored, and there are certain learning outcomes that will be actually seen or uh, sort of like evaluated at the end of that mentorship program, that's going to bring more value to that program. So again, uh, in the 21st century, where we have a lot of online resources and universities that have gone to the online mode, probably we should be actually, apart from our traditional education, looking in getting more education about how to become a more effective mentor. Okay, uh, Nasser, can you answer this question? How to handle a mentee uh, 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 who, okay, who is not willing to listen to anything that is not under his desires? Uh, I'm not sure what this means, but probably, I mean, it is talking about a mentee who is a difficult mentee and who is not willing to listen to the mentor. So how do you proceed? Do you simply cut off the relationship? You report him or her, or what do you do? So how to deal with a difficult mentee, Nasser? Well, first, uh, first of all, um, I, uh, I previously said that it's, it's a two-way relationship. But if it is in a formal mentorship relationship where you're forced to have a particular mentee and you have to groom him and uh, you, you, you're accountable for that, I think for in that case, uh, again, you have to look into it that what's wrong with the with, with, with your mentee? Like, why is he disinterested? Is it is it due to his personal problems, his social problems, his learning styles, his psychological issues? What's going on? You need to spend some time. You need to find that what does he attribute his disinterest to? Like either it's due to his lack of effort or it, it, he says that he simply he can't do that. He doesn't have the luck or the quality to do that or he doesn't have to, those uh, skills to do that. So you need to identify and attribute that to us, to something that is controllable. Like you cannot work on luck for somebody that right? if he says my luck is bad, I cannot do that. So you cannot do, you can do nothing for his luck. But if he, if you can, if you can mold his attribution, that it's not the luck that is causing his problem. It is basically his lack of effort. So he can do more effort. He can find more resources. He can find more guides. He can put in more efforts and improve. So I think it's it's a, a it's it's a whole big area to look into when somebody is totally disinterested in a particular area. And uh, one of the mentorship skills I would like to tell you that whenever, it, this is a normal problem, it, do, it does happen, but whenever a relationship goes toxic, like if there is a personality clash, if there is a hierarchical clash, if there are psychological or other issues, and there are breach of boundaries, then a, 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 a relationship can be called off because you might not be the right mentor for that person. So uh, you need to work on it, find time and uh, find reasons and then uh, take corrective measures accordingly. Thank you for these excellent insights, Nasser. So the next question is, and again, this question is going to be uh, posed to both of you, starting with Dorothy. What are some of the mentor mentee complications that you have experienced and how have you solved them? Dorothy, would you like to go first, please? Yeah. And as I respond to the mentor mentee problems, I just wanted to say something uh, as a follow up to the previous question because it's in totality. We run a mentoring, formal mentoring program, and it's at institutional level. And we've also helped other institutions. And we have encouraged if you run an institutional mentoring program, to have a coordinator and this coordinator is the person who can help uh, what this difficult relationship when relationships are toxic when the relationship is not working or there's a problem so i just wanted to just say that so that like if it's in a university and there's a mentoring program you may not be working well with one mentee but then you can be given another mentor 
but that normally works best with a coordinator as a in the mentoring relationship. So the typical mentor mentee have already uh, uh, challenges. Some of them have been mentioned. Some of them is just pure chemistry. Some of them is crossing boundaries and crossing boundaries in so many different ways, including confidentiality issues. Uh, some of it, it is uh, uh, institutional setup, you know, like uh, if a mentor and mentee have a certain relationship and then there's a change in the institutional setup, that causes a problem because one is the boss of the other and then one becomes maybe they are parallel and they find a challenge. We found uh, time, time is a big, big uh, uh, challenge to some of the mentor and mentee. Uh, distance used to be a problem with, the, with now internet is not as much, but still people at one time or the other don't mind having a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, relationship. And then uh, not having set goals, you know, if, if the mentee doesn't have clear set goals, and um, mentors normally tend to be busy people. They lose interest. And uh, that's a very important thing about a mentee. It's important that they, they have a set goal. On the other side, uh, why we like to bring our mentors to some kind of training a little bit, sometimes they tend to be a top down. You know, what uh, the speaker said the other time, they tell, 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 and explain instead of uh, listening and letting it be a two-way communication. It's so important in mentoring that you are more a listener than you're telling. And it's very common amongst very accomplished people, the universities and all. I'm a professor, so I know it all. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for these great insights. So now sir, your take on this question. What are some of the mentor mentee complications that you have faced and experienced and how have you solved them? Well, uh... I mentioned in my talk certain very basic things that we need to cover to avoid all these things. But I would like to repeat that uh, the, one of the most common thing is uh, unrealistic expectations on the part of both mentor and mentee. At times the mentee expects that you will make a presentation for them or you'll do all the literature search for them or you'll write an article for them or do the major thing. They're sadly mistaken because that's not the case because my mentors usually don't have that much of a time. That So you should curb all these unrealistic expectations right from the very beginning. This lack of objectives and lack of clear planning in mentorship if you don't that may make it clear in the very beginning, you're going to have uh, problems later on. So in order to have a smooth run in your mentor mentee relationship, you need to give some time. You need to find time. You need to keep time in your program for your mentees, right? You should not consider it as an ad hoc or an informal or useless activity. You should make the best use of it. You should give time to it you should avoid unrealistic expectations and uh, uh, planning is the most important thing. Planning and objectivity and clear objectives. Thank you. So planning, giving time, taking it as a formal responsibility and having clear goal at the, set, at the start is one of the keys of having a good mentor-mentor relationship. Uh, we have already spent our one hour, so I'm going to finish it by asking two questions. Uh, one question is, if a mentor keeps changing mentees, is there a problem, Dorothy? <laughs> yes, and most probably, let me not say yes, most probably. And most, it could be time, it could be commitment, it could be mentees who have a problem and the realistic expectations that you've had. And that's why it's a bit, uh, you really have to be clear at the beginning. I think setting objectives, why do you want this relationship to be, is so key. And if it's not clear to both, then yeah, it, that's going to happen. It can be so many uh, reasons, but I, I suspect that is uh, could be some of them. Thank you. So the last question is, are there any established mechanism and institution for mentorship? And for this, actually, I'm going to ask uh, my colleague, uh, Andy Nobs. Andy, if you're around, can you please like unmute yourself and talk about the authorship uh, online mentorship program, which to the best of my knowledge is probably the largest in the world and which has probably helped thousands of people like me. And a little bit of disclaimer, 
I started off with Authorate back in 2008 when I was a young resident working in a developing country with very little support and knowledge and idea what research is all about. Over the next 15 years, you know, like I actually had a great experience as a mentee, then as a mentor, as a teacher, and right now I'm an Authorate steward contributing to the mission of Authorate and helping people all around the world. So Andy, if you're around, can you please like unmute yourself and quickly recap what Authorate is all about? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, sure, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Farouk, and thank you to the speakers. Um, the Authorate platform on the Authorate platform, we um, have our own online mentoring system, and um, you, if you sign up as a member on Authorate at authorate.info, and um, I think my colleague Tabitha put the link in the chat box earlier. Actually, if you sign up as a member, you'll have access to um, approach any other member on the system, either as a mentor, a mentee, or a collaborator. And um, you can you can search for researchers in your particular field or who are offering particular skills, and you can approach them online, uh, connect with them, and set up um, a mentoring relationship that way. And there's a secure messaging system which you can use to get that conversation started. So, um, but I would I would back up exactly what our speakers have been saying um, in in this webinar that it's really important to set expectations and to be really realistic about what you can achieve as a mentee and about what your mentor can can achieve and can help you with and likewise as a mentor if you want you can also sign up on authorate as a mentor and, and get registered there and um it, again it is important to um understand how the system works and, and be realistic and under, also understand that if you are if you're working as a virtual mentor it can be challenging to set to get that um that rapport going um, on, on an online forum and so it may there may be some addition, some initial challenges in kind of getting that communication going particularly if you're in a different country um, of different culture but the the online mentoring system is there um, so please do take a look and um, give it to go and try to take advantage of that that free online system if you're either a mentor or, or a mentee thank you very much Andy. And this brings us to the end of this wonderful webinar. It was great listening to these good speakers and you know, like the enlightening answer that they gave for different questions that our participant uh, raised. I really hope that uh, each one of you will go back a little bit more knowledgeable, more motivated, and hopefully whether whatever stage of learning and teaching you are, you are going to plan to become a mentor one day. And as Dorothy repeatedly mentioned, Please remember, you know, just being very good in academics does not mean you can be a good mentor. And just not having a good title does not mean you cannot be a mentor. Anyone can be a mentor to someone who wants to learn. So mentorship is more about having that kind of craze, that kind of thing that you go beyond the call of duty and you spend extra time, energy and efforts in order to connect to people who are looking for guidance and mentorship. And please remember, mentorship is actually something, you know, what goes around comes around. If you help someone in need today, one day you are going to get benefit out of that relationship and you will be helped and you are going to go to places that you never, never even dreamt of. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Nasir Mansoor, Dr. Dorothy Mohaibi and the authorate team for this wonderful session. Thank you, everyone. And this concludes our session. Greetings, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you. Thanks everyone.